In celebration of 100 years of UIL Texas High School football, the UIL, Dave Campbell's Texas Football and HEB, teamed up to honor the best, brightest, and most unforgettable teams in the sport's illustrious history. With the help of some of the state's foremost experts and historians, we selected and honored 100 of the finest teams to grace the gridiron that give the game its one-of-a-kind flair. Throughout the course of the season, fans from across the state voted each week to help us select 10 of the greatest teams in UIL history. Today, we are proud to recognize Denver City High School and the 1960 Mustangs team who were selected by the fans as one of the top 10 greatest high school football teams in UIL history. Joining us to celebrate, we have the mayor of Denver City, Tommy Hicks, the city manager for Denver City, Stan David, the superintendent for Denver City ISD, Patrick Torres, the principal of Denver City High School, Rick Martinez, district athletic director for Denver City ISD, Chief Bridgeforth. We have former players from the 1960 Mustangs team, Bucky Johnson, Tommy Jones, Larry Rawls, Wes Sewell, and Jim Childers. We have Denver City ISD board members joining us here today, Danny Escalante, Eloy Gutierrez, and Brad Woosley, and city council member and writer there in Denver City for their newspaper, we have Clint Bowman, and representing the presenting sponsor of our UIL 100 Greatest Teams, we have Alyssa Owens, public affairs specialist for HEB. Now, Coach Fontenot, I want to kick off the first question to you. First and foremost, thank you for getting this group together to be a part of this special recognition. recognition. Tell us what made that 1960 Denver City Mustangs team so special and, and why you believe they were selected by the fans as one of the greatest high school football teams in UIL history. Well, first of all, we want to thank you guys, Dave Campbell, and HUB, for sure. This is a big honor for, for Denver City. Uh, some of the things, I've kind of went back and, and asked some questions and talked to some people to really see what made this team special. And if, if you look at just the playoff run, uh, they were scored on basically in the state championship game. That's the only time they're in the playoff run or scored. Uh, I talked to some guys that basically said you could go in the state of Texas and hand pick an entire football team wherever you wanted to. And you wouldn't have found better than ever position than this team had. They talked about it being just basically a well oiled machine. There were twins that played on the team, the Braddock brothers. One of them was a lineman, one of them was a quarterback. The quarterback accounted for 333 points in that state championship run, which is, is pretty impressive. And also a stat that, that I got was they played 720 minutes of football that year. They scored 719 points. That's pretty impressive. Every play from scrimmage that year was five yards. So from the first play to the last play, that was the average. They talked about the coaching staff, Coach Orr, Coach Emmer, Coach Knox, Coach Parkinson. They talked about everybody that played on that team talked about you couldn't put together a better coaching staff to work with the young men is what they had been. Stories about the top team formation. People talked about they could have the ball off, be across the front line of the defense before they even knew the ball had snapped. Very unique football team for sure. We're, we're very blessed for having those guys uh, to represent Denver City. Uh, we're excited that we get to bring some of those guys back and continue to be a part of this tradition that we have here in Denver City. That was a special team for sure, Coach. You know, like you said, that team outscored their opponent 719 to 88 and went undefeated 15 and 0 season. We're joined here by some players from, from that 1960 team. Bucky, I want to ask you, in, in your opinion, you know, what made that 1960 team so special and, and, and how special is it for you to be here joined with some of those players here today? Well, there was just some of the players were outstanding players and it wasn't me it was other players and, and uh, coaching staff and coach or had his system and it was a good system and most of the people had never run up against that in playing ball we had line split too wide and our backfield was up close to the line so out they, we were basically a running thing we didn't do a whole lot of Passing, but we were fortunate to win that ball. Because that team we played was an outstanding team. 
Tommy, as, as you look back on that 1960 season, what's a memory that stands out to you most? Wow. Lots of, lots of memories. But, uh, I would have to say it was uh, all of the things, not, not one, just one thing, but all of the things that made that team what it was. It was uh, more moral, uh, prayer, prayer before James. It was, uh, you know, the moral attitude of the whole team. He did Coach Orr, Coach Harkin, uh, Himmler, all of them, they, they didn't put up with no nonsense. They didn't put up with no smoking and no drinking. They kicked some really, really good players off of the team because of that. And uh, no nonsense. But uh, there was lots of, you know, special memories. Uh, I can't name any one particular one except for me in the championship game when we were behind. We had never done an onside kick. And I was a kicker, and uh, Mojor asked me if I could do an onside kick. And I said, yes, sir, I think I can kick it wherever you want. I said, I can even get one of those guys with that ball. He said, okay, well, do that. And I kicked him and hit the guy right straight across from me, and the ball bounced right back in my arm. We took possession and pulled it. Ultimately, That's an awesome story. That's an awesome story. Now, we're joined by the city, the city manager of Denver City, Stan David. Stan, how special is it for you to see the 1960 Denver City Mustangs team be recognized as, as one of the top 10 greatest teams in, in UIL 100 history? Well, it's a tremendous honor for the team and for Denver City. Uh, you know, it's an honor for the players, the coaches, uh, everybody that uh, makes up uh, uh, a team like that, all the all the behind the scenes stuff, and then uh, and the fans uh, at that time, and it just gives uh, Denver City and especially those who had a part in that season something to be very proud of. Uh, I know or have known several of the individuals that were on that team. Uh, I mean, one of them was one of them was the reason that I ended up in Denver City in the first place. You know, it was a great team with some great individuals. I came here in the late 80s. Uh, it didn't take very long to uh, learn about that team and and see what football meant to Denver City. And uh, I know several of the individuals uh, that were part of that team uh, continued after their high school careers to have a huge impact on Denver City and the school system, uh, the community as a whole, and I'm sure some of them that ended up in other places uh, had impacts on their communities as well. I'm just more familiar with the ones that stayed around here. Uh, but the uh, the recognition for that team is is well deserved and much appreciated. I know as uh, as with most awards, you know you hope that uh, something like this will inspire and encourage others. Uh, you hope that uh, the current and future Denver City athletes uh, will see something like this and maybe uh, raise their expectations a little bit higher, work a little bit harder, uh, do a little bit more to, to reach their maximum potential. Uh, but again, you know, it's just a, a tremendous honor for all involved to be named as one of the 10 all-time greatest teams, and it's a just a great honor for Denver City and for our school system. Principal Martinez, uh, you know, Stan alluded to this a little bit, you know, the, the community support that you guys have in Denver City. I mean, even if we go back and we talk about how we got here, we named a hundred of the greatest teams and it was up to, to the fans to vote and ultimately help us narrow it down and select the top 10 greatest teams. Tell us a little bit about, Principal Martinez, tell us a little bit about the Denver City community and how special it was for you to see everyone come together and rally the vote 
to lift Denver City to the top to be named one of those top 10 greatest teams. Mr. Rob, uh, thanks, thanks for having us. Rob, I've, I've had the good fortune of being part of Denver City for years, for nine years now. And, and in those nine years, I've, I've witnessed one of the greatest communities I've ever been a part of. Uh, people come together, the folks are there for one another. Uh, everyone's about love, family. Uh, it's just, just a great community to be a part of. And when, when I knew the, the boat was there, and, uh, people need to come together to be the top 10 of uh, this uh, award. I had no doubt that the folks in Denver City, across the state, even uh, folks that have ties in Denver City, would come out ahead. Uh, I've seen it happen many times where when it was time to get it done, Denver City gets it done. And uh, we, we here at Denver City have, have that, whatever it takes to add, we work, we work to, to be the best, and work to see their children, to, to work for being the best as well. Again, I want to thank you for having us. Coach Bridgeforth, uh, you know, District Athletic Director there at Denver City ISD. You know, Texas high school football is special, and, and, and there's a lot of pride when it comes to Texas high school football. So when we start talking about legacy and being one of the top 10 greatest teams in, in UIL 100 history, you know what type of weight that that holds. Tell us a little bit about what type of legacy you believe that 1960 Denver City Mustangs team left behind, and how do you believe that that helped that historic season help mold the rich tradition that Denver City has today? Well, you know, I really think that the thing that stands out for me is for, for this generation is that it's possible. The 1960 team showed that it's possible to be a blue collar, hardworking West Texas town and win a state championship in Texas. And so that, you know, one the first time I ever walked into the field house, there on the wall is this original newspaper article about winning state. And so you know how important that is. Uh, just to say you win a state championship in Texas, uh, no matter what year, carries a lot of weight. And, and I also think that the problem in the legacy is we're still talking about 61 years later, that it's going to be forever, that uh, eventually, uh, you know, the players pass, the coaches pass. But that will always be part of the industry history of Texas history that 1916 got it done I mean, and, and really what carries over today I see is just the attitude that you get what you work for, not what you wish for. Denver City has, I, I believe our coaches did a good job of uh, teaching that you're going to face more talented people, but you just have to work harder. I, I heard some of the exact players and gentlemen talk about a while ago that their coach said. They might lose a game, but it wouldn't be because they weren't in shape. If they were working two and a half hours and they were just going to outwork people. And I think that carries over today. And, and our coaches do a good job of teaching that to the youth players today. Larry, for those who, who don't know Coach Orr, tell us what type of coach Coach Orr was and, and why you believe he was such an integral part of that undefeated season and state championship run uh, for that 1960 team. Coach Orr was a dedicated coach that wanted to win. He stood behind his boys. You give him four four away or you give him credit. A lot of football players who were top notch football players were giving credit to Coach Orr because of that kick off. Because he had his rules, he went by his rules, and he didn't play. The year that we won the state championship, there were two boys that were good running back. You got to the team because they didn't go by the team. I always look back and look down the road and I see Coach Tom Landon of the Dallas Cowboys. He reminded me of Coach Hill. Tom Landon, can you do it my way or you go on down the road and play with somebody else? Coach Hill was trying to do the better way. We're going to do it my way. I came back to Junior City. I was gone for seven years at Southern Dallas. I came back to do the two and I saw Coach Orr, and he wasn't coaching anything. And I said, Coach Orr, what the deal is? He just get burned out on the coaches, and the coach was a deal. And he said, No. Larry, whenever he got to know that I couldn't control my players, I'm going to be much different. That's the kind of guy Coach Orr was. The other coaches were dedicated to me. Coach Orr, the line coach. He was a very good coach. Coach Knox, Coach Harkin, they were all, and they were good teams. 
Well, that anytime you mention uh, Coach Landry and, and and Coach Orr in the same sentence, you know what what a tremendous what a tremendous honor that is just to give people some insight about what type of coach he was and 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 what he meant to those players. You know, we're we're super excited uh, to, to obviously be here with with folks from the 1960 team and 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 really excited to be here with Alyssa Owens, the public affairs specialist for HEB, and 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 none of this could have been possible without HEB support. Alyssa, I'm interested to learn from you, you know, why was it so important for HEB to team up with the UIL and Dave Campbell's Texas football to celebrate 100 years of UIL football? And why is connecting at the local level a priority for HEB? Well, first of all, I have to thank you for inviting me today. It's truly an honor to be in your presence to have some of these teammates from the 1960s team. Um, with HEB, the commitment to education is so important. It's important to develop the skills like resiliency, dedication, confidence, and most importantly, teamwork. Investing in our administrators and our teachers develops great teams who in turn take their leaderships into the classrooms and onto the fields to build teams of excellence. We see that in the 1960 Denver City football team and it shows clearly that their legacy has lived on. Um, tradition is important in our HEB culture, and it's important to share with the rest of our community. Being uh, from a small town, it's uh, very clear the only thing we had to do on a Friday night was to go to the football field and have some fun. It brought the communities together, um, especially in West Texas, you're so spread out, and it really does bring the community together and builds, it builds relationships, build trust, and just some excitement that they wouldn't have if it wasn't for UIL football. So we, we get behind them, we get behind our teams, and it's a strong passion out here. We couldn't be happy to be here. Well, listen, we're so grateful to have you here. You know, this past football season was, was a challenging one with the pandemic, and to have a, a, a glimmer of hope and, 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 and excitement to celebrate such, such a great tradition in Texas you know, around 100 years of, of UIL football and to recognize the UIL 100 greatest teams and to have AGB support is, is really a tremendous honor. And, and, and I think all of us would agree here. We're, we're so thankful for that and for, for y'all's commitment to, to honoring uh, Texas high school football and its legacy. You know, Superintendent Torres, I, you know, tell us a little bit about what it means to you to have the support of partners like HEB who are committed to recognizing the achievements of Texas high schools and communities, not only there at Denver City, but also across the state of Texas. Well, it means a whole lot. You know, HUB uh, has had a long-standing history of supporting uh, Texas public schools uh, from their uh, awards of excellence. Uh, I've had former teachers that won those awards for district awards, uh, administrator awards. Uh, they have a long track record of supporting public education. And um, to me, that means a whole lot because that means they value uh, what happens in public schools across the state. Um, they put their time and their resources there and they have not only supported in that area, but uh, provided a lot of funding uh, across the board. And so that means a whole lot to have, um, you know, a top-notch uh, corporation and company like them that not only has great products that they offer from a uh, grocery standpoint, but they have all these other pieces that they do. And uh, it just means a lot. It seems that they value what we do in public school. Uh, they value from the teacher level to the administrative level across the board. And in this case, partnering with, with Dave Campbell and UIL uh, to honor athletics uh, and the tremendous impact that it has on young men and women. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's just a great honor. And so I'm just super excited to be part of this uh, celebration that means a lot uh, and to be able to, to bring back these folks here from the 1960 team. Uh, and you heard it from all the others in this room here uh, and across the board of what that means and honor the legacy. Uh, there's not a lot of teams that can say that. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication, a little bit of luck, a little bit of everything uh, to be able to, to get a state achievement. You have to like it should be. Uh, they come in and support. Uh, very, very great. For that. Mayor Hicks, I, I want to ask you a, a similar question. You know, this was this was a challenging year with the Texas high school football season, but but also a special one, celebrating 100 years of UIL football. 
and also the top 10 greatest teams in UIL football history. Tell us a little bit about how special it is for you to see Denver City be recognized as a part of this achievement and what it means to you to have partners like HEB who are committed to honoring the achievements of Texas high schools and communities, not only there at Denver City, but across the state. Well, uh, being a former Denver City Mustang from the 70s is, is super special for us. And the, women, the winning legacy that this team brought and carries on to this day is, is still awesome. And the, for ATB, the effort and for their sponsors, the time and the effort that it takes to spend on a project like this is uh, priceless. And we're just so happy to still have uh, companies like HEB that are still interested in sponsoring schools, sponsoring our sports athletic programs and, and those kind of efforts. So we want to thank HEB again for that effort. So thanks again. Now, before we close out, you know, I want to bounce this last question to, to Wes and Jim. Wes, I'll start with you. Texas high school football is unlike anything else in the world. Uh, tell us a little bit in your words, what makes Texas high school football so special and uh, how unique it was for you to be a part of that 1960 team and this achievement? The thing that stood out to me was the community behind the team. Because when we went to an out of town game, it would all but shut Denver City down. I recall somebody saying they had to appoint a gas station to stay open for people that were passing through because the rest of the town was gone. And, and Jim, tell us kind of that same thing. You know, what makes Texas high school football so special in your words? And, and what will you remember most about that 1960 season? Uh, like Wes, it's the spirit of, of Denver City behind us. I live a long way from Denver City now. I'm in South Dakota. But my roots are still with that town. But I think one of the things that stood out, and I never will forget, we played, I believe it was Slayton. Uh, and they were a district in our district. And we beat Slayton. The final score was 90 to 6, if you guys remember. But what I remember about that game, and I was a lineman, and it speaks to the character that Larry mentioned earlier of Coach Orr. We, as players, were trying to get over 100. But Coach Orr wasn't going to let it happen. And he switched everyone around. I, in fact, played two or three series as quarterback, or downs as quarterback, and I was a lineman. But again, that was Coach Orr and Coach Jim did everything possible to keep us from scoring over 100. And like Wes, the town shut down, except for one policeman, I think they always assigned to stay there. Uh, never will forget that season. Never will forget these guys that I played with. Well, guys, on behalf of the UIL, Dave Campbell's Texas Football and HEB. Congratulations again to the 1960 Denver City Mustangs on being named one of the top 10 greatest teams in UIL 100 history. I want to spend, I want to extend a special thank you to Alyssa Owens and the team at HEB for your continued support of Texas high school football and the UIL 100 greatest teams. And to all the folks on this call, thank you so much for, for being part of this special celebration.